I thank the gentleman. I'd now like to recognize the gentleman from Connecticut, Mr. Larson. Connecticut, yes. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I thank all the panelists. Uh, this has uh, uh, been a, a very um, interesting uh, session. We don't often spend as much time on the Constitution uh, as we have today, and I'm, I'm quite interested in uh, the constitutionality of all this. I actually thought we were in a committee hearing in the United States Congress actually discussing in the Committee of Cognizance tax policy and discussing the ramifications of that policy. So rather than working around, I kind of feel like this is working directly. And the way that our system works, four witnesses come with very uh, important and well-established, well-researched views on their feelings. And one is a counterbalance to all of that. For those that are listening in on this, that's how the system works. That's how it's supposed to work. So, Mr. Barnes, I had to ask you especially, uh, you seem to have a difference of opinion about Pillar Tool. Number one, do you think that the Constitution is being violated here uh, by the Biden administration or here in Congress? Well, because any tax legislation to enact Pillar 2 will necessarily be started in the House Ways and Means, will go to the Senate, will be signed by the President. It will follow our ordinary course of, of constitutional progress for tax legislation at the end of the day. That was my impression, and that's, I used to be a, a history teacher in school, so I thought that we were following the Constitution. You can have constitutional concerns, but we are following the Constitution. Also, there is big disagreement over whether or not the future for this great nation of ours in these joint agreements with more than 50 countries that are participating in this, it seems as though we should be going it alone as opposed to working with other nations in a global economy and in these times where we're in a world that needs to, where we need to be at the table seated there. And it seems as though we're saying, no, what we need to do is operate alone and by ourselves. That to me sounds an awful lot like isolationism. How are we advantaged by working together? with these other nations, Mr. Barnes? Let me, let me take two examples from tax history uh, that are not directly pillar two. First would be the treatment of corporate bribes. Uh, some of you are familiar with the history. In the 1970s, the U.S. said corporate bribes are bad. They should not be tax deductible. Other countries were, that's an ordinary course, the cost of doing business. It took 20 years before some of our major trading partners said bribes are not a good thing we should make them non-tax deductible and illegal. It, the U.S. leadership took decades, but we got the right result. Same thing with bank secrecy. Uh, a tax system can only be enforced if there's adequate information. There were countries that said bank secrecy is part of our blood. Uh, you shouldn't uh, come in and, and breach my tax bank secrecy. The U.S., with the help of Germany and a few other countries, over a period of time led to uh, sufficient information exchange to enforce our, our laws. Uh, I think U.S. leadership consistently has helped improve global tax rules, and I am confident uh, they did on Monday of this week, uh, and the continued participation by the U.S. will make the ultimate Pillar 2 rules uh, much, much better. And how will that advantage the United States long run in terms of the, our economy? Uh, I hope it will help us. Um, I realize that there are debates over whether Pillar 2 ought to exist at all or, or not, but there are some distinct advantages. I mentioned one uh, with the Singapore example to level the playing field. Um, it will put pressure on countries to reduce their corporate tax rates. Those, uh, those people who believe that high corporate tax rates, that is way above 15 uh, percent, are, are a deterrent to investment should cheer Pillar 2. With a country-by-country country analysis, a country like India, Japan, with high corporate taxes, will be starkly illustrated as having a rate 
where the taxpayers bear an excess cost. Today, with the blended rules under guilty, that pressure doesn't fall entirely on the high tax jurisdictions because taxpayers can self-help to a lower rate. Uh, the other advantage for the U.S. is one Michael Plowgen mentioned, which is uh, it will reduce the incentives for U.S. businesses to move offshore. That has an advantage for investment in the U.S., U.S. workers, U.S. jobs. Thank you, sir. Yield back. 